Chlorine is an essential ingredient in the manufacture of an enormous amount of consumer products, industrial materials, and water purification supplies, and is involved in almost half of the United States' gross national product. The same characteristics of chlorine that make it so useful also make it a highly hazardous material if it is released into the atmosphere. This video will present an overview of first aid and medical assistance directions for helping people who have had an acute exposure to chlorine gas. This video does not address exposure to liquid chlorine by direct contact, as this is highly unlikely except to a person in the immediate area of the point of release. Liquid chlorine rapidly vaporizes, and its effects are the same as chlorine in gas form, except that direct contact with liquid chlorine can also cause serious thermal and chemical burns. Chlorine gas can also be generated accidentally if household bleach solutions are mixed with acids. Mixing ammonia cleaning solutions with bleach can also release irritant chloramines. This practice is not advised. The information in this video is a summary of the Chlorine Institute's Pamphlet 63, Edition 9. You should refer to this pamphlet for additional information. In addition, all suppliers of chlorine are required to supply a safety data sheet, or SDS, for chlorine. The SDS for chlorine can be readily obtained online from chlorine manufacturers or suppliers. As a first responder, you should read and understand the contents of the SDS and consider it an important reference document. Employers who make or use chlorine must train their employees to understand the information provided by the SDS and product label and how to use the information to protect themselves. When you are called to respond to assist people who have been exposed to chlorine gas, your first responsibility is to ensure your own safety, the safety of other first responders, and others in the contaminated area. Remember the first rule of emergency response is to protect yourself from exposure. You can't come to the aid of someone else if you become adversely affected by exposure. When dealing with a possible chlorine emergency, it is important to remember that chlorine gas is primarily a respiratory irritant. Chlorine can be detected by smell at very low concentrations and has a familiar odor like household bleach. As the concentrations increase from the level of detection by smell, so do the symptoms in exposed individuals. The toxic effects of chlorine are due to its corrosive properties. Exposure to chlorine gas at low concentrations may cause irritation of the nose, the mucous membranes of the respiratory tracts, and eyes. For example, at chlorine concentrations above 5 parts per million, the gas is very irritating. It is unlikely that any person would willingly remain in such an environment for more than a very brief time. As concentrations increase, so does irritation, resulting in coughing, sneezing, salivating, and eventually difficulty breathing. As the duration of exposure or the concentration increases, fluid enters the breathing spaces, causing symptoms of rapid breathing, shortness of breath, wheezing, and the accompanying medical signs of rapid respirations. Blood will enter the fluid and will be visible as pink or bloody sputum. Extreme cases of chlorine exposure can be fatal. If the symptoms persist for more than a few hours, Exposed individuals should be placed under medical observation. It is important to realize the effects of exposure to chlorine may become more severe for several days after the incident. Administering first aid immediately is a critical first step when someone has been exposed to chlorine gas. Prompt action is essential. First, move any exposed individuals away from contaminated areas as quickly as possible. Assess symptomatic individuals immediately. Those exposed individuals that are not symptomatic can be triaged for assessment later. And of course, get medical help as soon as possible. If the individual's skin or clothing has become saturated with liquid chlorine, take immediate steps to decontaminate the person by removing the affected clothing and showering. 
Immersion in a safety shower is usually sufficient to remove any residual chlorine gas. In keeping with standard first aid procedures, you should evaluate anyone that has been exposed to chlorine for an adequate airway, breathing, and circulation after the inhalation. If the person is not breathing, immediately administer CPR and continue it until professional medical assistance arrives. If the person is breathing, remove them to fresh air and keep them comfortable. Encourage regular deep breathing and if equipment and trained personnel are available, monitor the person's vital signs, the respiratory rate, pulse, blood pressure, and oxygen saturation. Humidified oxygen is the primary on-site treatment for chlorine inhalation since the humidity soothes the irritation to the mucous membranes caused by the chlorine. However, if humidified oxygen is not available, oxygen without humidity should be given if oxygen therapy is indicated. There is no single protocol for treatment of chlorine inhalation or injuries to skin or eyes. Treatment protocols at on-site facilities may include observation of vital signs with pulse oximetry, humidified air, humidified oxygen, and nebulized bronchodilators. Individuals with significant symptoms should be transferred to an appropriate medical treatment facility. If the person's eyes have been irritated due to exposure to chlorine, flush them immediately with generous amounts of lukewarm water for at least 15 minutes. Hold the eyelids open during this period to ensure the water has contact with all accessible tissue of the eyes and lids. Get professional medical help as soon as possible. Continue flushing the eyes for at least 15 more minutes or until medical help arrives. After first aid has been administered, anyone who has developed symptoms as a result of an acute overexposure to chlorine gas by inhalation should be placed under the supervision of qualified healthcare professionals. Remember that there is no known specific antidote for acute chlorine exposure. A prompt medical assessment and supportive measures are necessary to obtain good therapeutic results. And finally, Consider oxygen therapy for anyone who continues to be symptomatic inhaling chlorine. The recovery period depends on the amount of exposure and the general health of the person. There is no single protocol for treatment of chlorine inhalation or injuries to skin or eyes. Treatment protocols may include observation of vital signs with pulse oximetry, humidified air, humidified oxygen, nebulized sodium bicarbonate, nebulized steroids, injected steroids, burn care, and ventilator support. Significant exposure cases that are symptomatic after six hours may develop delayed pulmonary edema and other long-term after effects. After an acute exposure to chlorine, pulmonary function usually returns to pre-exposure levels within one to two weeks and complete recovery usually occurs. However, people exposed to chlorine should be monitored for delayed effects, such as pulmonary edema, which is the accumulation of fluid in the lungs. And since physical exercise appears to have some relation with the incidence of delayed reaction, anyone who has had severe inhalation exposure should be kept at rest for the period of observation. The length of observation will depend on the clinical assessment of the person, but observation may be required for several days. Being prepared and knowing what to do is vital to the survival of someone who has been exposed to chlorine gas. This video is an overview of first aid and medical assistance directions for helping people who have had an acute exposure to chlorine gas. It is not a comprehensive summary of all possible health information, nor should this video be considered a treatment guide to a specific case. For more detailed information, please refer to the Chlorine Institute's Pamphlet 63, 9th edition, titled First Aid, Medical Management, Medical Evaluation and Occupational Hygiene Monitoring Practices for Chlorine. For additional resources and information, please visit the Chlorine Institute's website. The information contained in this video is drawn from sources believed to be reliable. The Institute and its members, jointly and severally, 
make no guarantee and assume no liability in connection with any of this information. Moreover, it should not be assumed that every acceptable procedure is included or that special circumstances may not warrant modified or additional procedures. The user should be aware that changing technology or regulations might require a change in the recommendations herein. Appropriate steps should be taken to ensure that the information is current when used. These suggestions should not be confused with federal, state, provincial, municipal, or insurance requirements or with national fire, building, or safety codes. The Chlorine Institute exists to support the chloralkali industry in advancing safe, secure, environmentally compatible, and sustainable production, distribution, and use of its mission chemicals. CI's mission chemicals include chlorine, sodium and potassium hydroxides, sodium hypochlorite, the distribution of vinyl chloride monomer, VCM, and the distribution and use of hydrogen chloride. This support extends to giving continued attention to the security of chlorine handling operations. Chlorine Institute members are committed to adopting CI's safety and stewardship initiatives, including pamphlets, checklists, and incident sharing that will assist members in achieving measurable improvement.